Hello, this is the final video for this LO and also the final video for the exam content. So well done for getting this far, if you have. We are going to talk about the different resources required for each of our presentation methods and also distribution channels, which we have looked at. So different methods require different resources. So a resource is just something we need to work effectively. Certain methods have certain requirements, right, which we need to try and fulfill. And we're going to consider three types of resources which are required. So hardware resources, software resources, and connectivity requirements more than resources, really. And because each method has got different requirements under these three categories, you might be you know, set on using a certain method and then have to look at your requirements. Alternatively, you may be more constrained, right? So thinking back to project management of LO1, you know, if you've got some user constraints, which is say you can't use a certain bit of hardware or a certain bit of software maybe, you're going to have to make other choices, you're going to be constrained by what you have available and so this is going to affect your decision to choose one method over another. Okay, let's talk about each of these three and as we go through, think about evaluation because we can use the points here to help evaluate our methods. So first of all, hardware requirements. So hardware consists of the physical components, the components we can touch, of a computer system, so the screen, the computer, the cable, etc. So I won't go through every single method because sometimes it's, you can just think of it yourself, but just to give an example, one of our methods was presenting, so actually standing up and presenting to an audience. Now you could just do this verbally without any slides, but often you have some slides as we talked about, and so to have slides you need to have a screen or a projector to actually get the slides up, um, and also you need to obviously connect these to a computer. So the projector, the screen and the computer are all examples of hardware you may require. Another example, a common one in presentations is having like a clicker in your hand to go through the slides. Now this is hardware, it's still a little hardware device because it's physical, I can touch it, but it isn't a requirement because you don't need to have a clicker to go through the slides. So make sure you're careful differentiating between what is optional and what is actually required. We talked quite a lot about different websites and any website needs to have a computer called a web server to actually host, to store your website itself and also allow people to connect to the website. This is hardware, it's not a magical device, right? It's an actual physical computer sat often in a big data center. I would offer a slight word of warning if you are going to talk about hardware requirements in evaluations. It's quite tempting to say that, you know, almost in fact, all of our methods need a computer to use. Well, you know, we're doing an IT course, so it should be sort of a given that we have a computer. Unless for case study, the scenario makes clear they haven't got a computer, don't talk about having a computer as a requirement because, you know, we're doing IT in the 21st century, everyone does have a computer pretty much. Our second of our triplet of requirements is looking at software. So software as a counterpoint to hardware. Software actually the programs running on your computer, so running on the hardware. So any application, we looked at five types of application right at the start. So just another example, if we're making, if we're wanting to present via a written report, we're going to need to use software to make this unless we're wanting to write it out by hand. So desktop publishing, DTP, can be used if you want a nice fancy report or just normal word processing software, but you need some software on a computer to actually write this. Again, it's not a magic, it doesn't magically appear. Also, say if you're wanting to communicate via audio calls, you need to have VoIP software, voice over internet protocol software, on all of your computers being used in the call. If I have VoIP software like Skype on my computer, that's great, but unless my person I want to speak to has also got it on their computer, I can't communicate via VoIP. So everyone's gonna have it who's gonna be involved in the call. Same with web conferencing, you know, if you've got one person who's got access to a web conferencing software, that's fine, but everyone needs to have access to it as well. The difference for web conferencing is that usually it can be done in a web browser, but web browser is also software, whereas VoIP is usually standalone. Like Skype or Teams, something like that, but it's stored on the desktop. And our third requirement or category of requirement is connectivity requirements. So these refer to whether you need to be connected to a network to access your resource. So a network is hardware and software really which enables us to share resources. So certain methods you need to be connected to, in fact most of them you do. So for example the cloud based service, the cloud for whole purposes you're accessing it remotely and so it's not stored on your actual computer. If you've got no internet connection you can't access the cloud. And if you're wanting to do something like real time collaboration like is going on here, you need to have an internet connection at all times. You can't suddenly drop off the internet and still be expecting to operate on this remote resource. A 
A second example, if we're wanting to use an internal website to communicate information, we need to make sure the people are all connected to your intranet, your intranet being your internal network. You can't go home and expect to be able to view your internal website because it's only available at your workplace. So these first two examples are all about actually not being connected at all to your correct network, but actually you can still be connected and it be an issue. So for example, YouTube and web conferencing platforms require an internet connection, of course, because they're online, but you know they can still be difficult to use if you have a poor connection. If your internet is not very fast or is very slow or drops in and out quite a lot, this may well lead to issues like buffering, buffering where it's waiting to load the video or for conference call but can't because your internet is too slow. So you can still be connected but you may, you may need a fast enough network to use it properly.